CIRCOM, we thought it was patched. Tell us. So this is kind of amusing to me that the story started off around Christmas and has come back to life around mm -hmm. Easter. Uh, but a researcher by the name of, I think it's pronounced Eloy Vanderbecken of Synactive Digital Security, uh, found a backdoor in firmware for particular DSL routers of mm -hmm. various brands that we're familiar with, but um, all developed originally by a company called CIRCOM. Um, and this was a backdoor on port 32764, I believe, mm -hmm. and it gave a complete remote shell into the device. You know, game over, your, your DSL modem is owned. And patches came out for it, and mm -hmm. life went on. Until recently, when he, the same researcher, went and analyzed the firmware update and found that the backdoor wasn't exactly removed. It was really more obfuscated. So it seems the same exact backdoor exists, and you can reach it if you send a Ethernet level packet to the device containing the MD5 hash of the model number of the router, mm -hmm. which is, in, in, is not actually as complicated as they just made it sound. Yeah. Um, but the backdoor is still there. And the, the, the idea was that you know they say it's been removed. You would expect them to remove it. It's really just been made harder to get at. Right, right. Um, it is a little harder to actually exploit it. You have to be on the local LAN because you know nothing above Ethernet gets routed. Mm -hmm. But if you're the ISP, you also have the ability to send this, which is a little bit interesting. Um, not sure if anyone would go to the lengths of compromising the ISP to compromise your home router, but you know it's another way in. Right. Um, so I guess the real upshot of this is that you know, people will put out patches for these sorts of things, mm -hmm. and it's really not that hard anymore to go back and verify that the patch has been made. And the right. Internet of Things is going to be one of those, those playgrounds where things are not going to quite get patched for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I think we've got more expertise in this space now that people will be able to verify and say, you know, you really didn't fix this, and it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. Do they have any uh, explanation for why this other bizarre way of getting through this back door still exists? So apparently, this is, it looks like leftover or borrowed code from an old CIRCOM update and management utility mm -hmm. that another researcher had actually used the same exact method of sending that, that hashed MD, uh, hashed, um, MD5 sum. MD5 sum. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> And a different model also um, created by CIRCOM. Mm, okay. So this seems to be borrowed code used to mask the existing you know, vulnerability. Mm. Uh, but the fact that that code had already been written in existence sort of points to the fact that they knew what they were doing here. This wasn't some sort of accidental, mm -hmm. you know, we, we thought we fixed it. Yeah. It's, it's backdoor code to cover backdoor code. Yeah, it, you know, kind of, to me, it kind of looks like there was some kind of functionality they're trying to preserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they apparently needed that backdoor for some reason or other, um, hopefully for legitimate purpose. But, you know, it's still sort of skirting the real security solution that, uh, that, needs, to be, uh, that needs to be addressed. That is, there really shouldn't be a backdoors obscure, obscure or not. Right. Now, as you pointed out, it looked like you'd still in this case, you need to be, you know, within the ISP effectively. I suspect that there's some ISP out there that needed this management capability, and so it provided some level of security. Uh, the obscurity portion, perhaps not, but at least the control framework that uh, they'd be operating in. Uh, I guess it is probably worthy to point out that in some, depending on the architecture of the ISP, there is shared infrastructure associated with those, so it is potentially possible to reach from one client to another client and uh, possibly be able to exploit something like that. But we need to understand the specific circumstances a little bit better. And don't forget, we also have the LAN side vulnerability. And we've right. seen attacks before right. where malware will compromise a, a PC on the LAN. Right. And then if they have the ability to write raw packets, they can go ahead and exploit this still. Yeah, absolutely. And that would be uh, an avenue to be able to to inject malware, create persistence, perhaps change their DNS mm -hmm. resolver, which we've seen, we've seen certainly that. in the past. So, I think the most amusing thing you said was that when the patch came out back in December, you know everybody was, you know, all happy. But I would venture to guess that most people weren't even aware that they needed to update their, you know, mo most of these are home yeah. routers, and who actually knows? Oh, I have this CIRCOM firmware on my home router device. I need to update. I bet you the majority. We're not even aware, but right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> maybe if they watch the show, they're aware. <laughs> <laughs>